and Megan with Campus Recreation. Thank you for joining me for this week's episode of Nutrition Intermission. Since it is the beginning of another month, we are going to start off today's episode by talking about what is in season still for this month of November. So first on my list, I have Belgian endive. You wanna look for endive that is covered to prevent light exposure and that has tight leaves and a crisp solid head. For broccoli, if you're choosing fresh broccoli, look for odorless broccoli heads with tight bluish green florets. And butter lettuce, you wanna avoid any butter lettuce head that has wilted leaves or any brown or yellow spots. For daikon radish, the skin should be shiny, firm, and smooth with crisp roots. And try to avoid radishes with cracks and bruises. Grapes. Um, Choose plump, firm grapes with uh, firmly attached to the stem. And then pineapple is another great option. So choose uh, pineapple with dark green leaves that is heavy um, in weight and avoid soft or dark spots and any dry looking leaves. Rounding out my list, I have radicchio. So look for um, a bright maroon, red, or purplish leaf um, and leaves that are fresh, young, moist, and tender. When you're looking at any lettuces, um, just be sure that they're not injured, torn, dried, or limp, um, or any yellowing or brown that does indicate poor quality. So just a, a little reminder there. Next, we're gonna transition into our micronutrients. So as the name implies, micronutrients are only needed in small amounts. They do assist the body in producing enzymes, hormones, and other vital substances that are needed for proper growth and development. Consequences ensue when we are deprived or consume too many micronutrients. As always, the key is a balance of the proper amounts for optimal health and functioning. We're gonna tackle vitamins first. So these are organic, non-caloric micronutrients that are essential for normal physiological function. Vitamins must be consumed through food but there are three exceptions, vitamin K and biotin, which can be produced by normal intestinal flora, and vitamin D, which can be self-produced with sun exposure. There is no perfect food that contains all the vitamins in just the right amount. We do have to consume a variety of nutrient-dense foods to ensure adequate vitamin intake. Many foods nowadays are actually fortified with some nutrients to decrease the risk of vitamin deficiency. Some examples are products like milk, bread, and cereal, to name just a few. Additionally, some foods contain inactive vitamins called provitamins, and the body does not contain any enzymes to convert these provitamins into active vitamins inside the body. As humans, we need 13 different vitamins on a daily basis. These are divided into two categories, water-soluble vitamins and fat-soluble vitamins. We will first tackle water-soluble vitamins. So thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, pantothenic acid, folate, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, biotin, and vitamin C are the water-soluble vitamins. That was a bit of a mouthful. Um, As the name implies, water-soluble vitamins dissolve in water, which allows them to be easily absorbed and distributed by the body. They play a significant role as cofactors of the enzymes that are involved in metabolism. With the exception of vitamins B6 and B12, water-soluble vitamins cannot be stored in the body and are readily excreted in urine. Folate which is also known as vitamin B9 and folic acid in its supplement form, is named for its abundance in items like green leafy leafy vegetables and actually is crucial during pregnancy. Folate is essential for production of DNA, red and white blood cell and neurotransmitter formation and amino acid metabolism. Deficiency is relatively common as folate is easily easily lost during food preparation and cooking and because most people do not eat enough green leafy vegetables. So your PSA to include and incorporate more green leafy vegetables into your diet. Folate deficiency early in pregnancy can lead to neural tube defects such as spina bifida. Next, we move into some fat-soluble vitamins. There are 
four fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. They are often found in fat containing foods and stored in the liver or adipose tissue until they are needed. It is important to note that if fat absorption is impaired, so is fat soluble vitamin absorption. Fat soluble vitamins can be stored in the body for extended periods of time and eventually are excreted in feces. This storage capacity increases the risk of toxicity from overconsumption, but it does decrease the risk for deficiency. The function of vitamin A is to help promote vision, healthy skin, and healthy hair. Vitamin D functions to promote strong teeth and bones and also prevent rickets. The function of vitamin E is to prevent damage to cell membranes, protect vitamin A, and also it aids in blood production. Finally, vitamin K functions to aid in blood clotting. Next, we tackle minerals. Minerals serve varied roles in the body. They act to regulate enzyme activity and maintain acid-base balance, and they work to assist with strength and growth. Minerals are absolutely critical for human life. Minerals can be found in the body as well as in food. The body's ability to use the minerals is dependent on their bioavailability, which is the, which is the degree and rate at which a substance is absorbed into the bloodstream. Typically, minerals with high bioavailability include sodium, potassium, chloride, iodide, and fluoride. Minerals with low bioavailability include iron, chromium, and manganese. All other minerals, including calcium and magnesium, are of medium bioavailability. We do have macro minerals. So these are calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sulfur, sodium, chloride, and potassium. And micro minerals like iron, iodine, selenium, and zinc. And there are also a few others that do not have established dietary reference intakes or DRIs. The last thing I do want to mention is it's is there is an important consideration when consuming minerals, um, particularly when you are taking mineral supplements, because it, there is a possibility for mineral to mineral interaction. So please make sure that you connect with your primary care provider to talk about any mineral supplements that you do wish to take. Thank you all for joining me today. I greatly appreciate your time and attention, and I look forward to sharing with you more in our upcoming nutrition intermission episodes. Thanks and have a wonderful day. We'll see you all soon.